Welcome to the last episode, the Capstone Project, which summarizes the three levels that are finally behind me and the two projects that are behind me in the complete Python for cybersecurity project. It's a long title. In today's episode, the final episode, I will be uh, outlining and documenting my process of how I create this Trojan. If you guys do not know the, the basic summary, um, my project three is to create a Trojan where um, there's a game in the in the front, seemingly harmless software, and in the back end there is something nefarious, which is going to be a keylogger for me. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, um, I'll leave a link in the cards. Uh, go ahead and just check them out. So the first step I'm going to do is just document um, and briefly outline a, a wireframe of how I like to see this project going, and uh, I'm going to outline what I'm going to do uh, through this wireframe. It's just offers a, a framework or a template for um, my overall project. So let's go ahead and do that and I will show you what I've come up with. I will show you, I will show you, show you. All right, I have my wireframe here. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this really quickly, document how I'm gonna attack this problem. A reminder that a Trojan is a seemingly harmless software that doesn't do anything. It just performs the function it was intended to do, intended to do. On the back end, there is an adversary, an attacker who has either established a backdoor connection and can implement other uh, malicious software into your computer. I've really defined the front end back end. So the front end is I have this seemingly harmless software. And this one is going to be a game that I'm going to develop in Pygame. Okay, so now we have the, the back end. And this is where uh, the, this, the malicious software comes in. For me, it's just gonna be a little keylogger that I developed in project two. I'm gonna have this keylogger implemented in Pygame. Uh, I don't have to create this program. I'm just gonna implement the one I used in project two. So now we have the connection and the connection is really gonna go like this. Basically, it's gonna be download this game on Facebook. Um, this is like a mock scenario. We're gonna have someone download this .exe file. It's going to estab establish a backdoor connection. It's gonna run the game, play the game. It's gonna establish a backdoor connection which is then going to give us access to our key, to their keystrokes rather, uh, which is then going to go on, you, you can say, hey, share this on Facebook, log into your Facebook profile. And that's the way of spreading it. Now that my wireframe is finished, it's time to start implementing the first step, which is building a game. We will be able to deceive the, the people, idiots. And no, I'm just joking. These are the top of the line, top of the line art skills. I've been sitting here for the last three hours trying to somehow come up with this implementation. I'm not a game developer, I'm a security guy, and so I'm really having trouble with this. And you know what that calls for? I, I got it. You know what it calls for? Let's keep moving. Okay, after many hours behind this computer screen, I've got a game somewhat working. So let me go ahead and showcase what I what I did this game. Here is the beloved code. This code produces what may be a great game to the eye. Now, with this being said, please do not make fun of me when I play this game, okay? So, if I play this, headphone users, I warn you. We have. Go ahead and click go. So, 
already, you know, we have this this going here. So basically, this is our game. Um, it's pretty simple. I have it outlined here, a little like um, room here. And basically, you have to find all three items to win the game and be a cybersecurity expert hacker. So there's the book. I'm giving away the game right now, guys. So if, if you don't want to see this, I part, will be a hacker. Boom! We are a cybersecurity expert hacker. As you can see, we got the PC, the hoodie, and the hacking book. We are now a cyber expert hacker. Now, I know this game is super stupid, and if someone were to actually, you know, make this a Trojan, people would be skeptical pretty quickly. But that's the, the whole point of this is to just kind of make a stupid game, and and I'm not spreading this anywhere. I'm on to creating this uh, as an executable. There's a few more things I'd finish up. I have to get rid of that little Python logo up top, and then I um, need to put this in an executable. And then after that, it's time to create the backdoor, the backdoor into this program. So let's go ahead and do those two steps there, get the image and the, the executable, and then I will um, start the backdoor. I have finished the Pi game icon. It does not look very good, but it's just a test game. And as you can tell from my interest, <laughs> that's going on the cringe completion. Next step is to build this backdoor. I realized that I, before even compiling the game into an executable, I have to implement the backdoor, compile the game and the backdoor together to create the executable because that's where I'm going to be communicating with the, the target or the victim. When it comes to creating a backdoor, I have no idea what I'm doing. Therefore, I'm going to be referencing um, the course that I did on level two of my Python course. Okay, so let's build this backdoor, and after I code this backdoor, I will show you how I'm going to put this Pygame and the backdoor into an executable. Let's get coding, boys and gals, if there's any gals out there. in the cybersecurity plane. Uh, I know about all of this Kali Linux stuff. I'm making a Trojan game. It's going to be great. A Trojan game? Yes. Trojan it's, game. It's, it's called I Will Be a Hacker and you have to collect all the items and then you win. Brother! I have finished the backdoor program. Let me briefly show you how I did it and how I implemented this. So let's transition to the computer. Here I have my Kali machine with the backdoor program and I also have my client uh, program. So this Microsoft Windows VM, let's just pretend that this is the client or the victim machine and this is our you know, attacker machine of course. So basically all we have to do is run our listener program in Python 2 which will listen for any incoming connections. I'm waiting for incoming connections and so at this point we are able to go ahead and with Python 2 installed on this machine we'll run this module and we have a connection from the machine. At this point we can do whatever we want. Um, so the two features that I have implemented on this backdoor, uh, the only two features are to communicate with the command lines like dir or you know cd or whatever you want to do and i also have an upload function which will upload files to the victim machine so i can do upload keylogger.py and again keep in mind that the keylogger py is in the same directory as my listener and so when i click this it says upload successful and when we come over here you will see that we have a keylogger.py on our desktop. Now I have the backdoor program. As you can see, the keylogger.py was on the desktop, so it's not very obscure. And the overall program works, but how are we going to implement this backdoor with the Pygame? So 
for our last kind of level or, or step here, what we're going to do is take the Pi game in the back door. We're going to make this an executable, which we will then be able to execute that, upload the keylogger uh, Python file onto the victim machine, and then we will be able to run that keylogger After several hours, I mean, I'm talking about like five or six hours trying to understand how I can compile this Pi game module into an executable, I finally have the solution. And it really wasn't that hard. The solution was in front of me the whole time. Don't you love it when that happens? So let's, I will show you how I compiled it. Here in front of me, I have the solution to compile my game. So I've transferred my game to this potential victim machine, for instance, because I'm going to package it on a victim machine. And here I have all of my content with what I need. Um, I didn't include the audio files for this packaging because it was really getting messed up. So the cringy uh, audio files are no longer needed. But everything else is all good to go. So if we go ahead and go to here and we click enter with our Pi installer, if you're not familiar with Pi Installer, it's basically a way to package your programs into executables. Okay, we will now have some folders that have been generated by Pi Installer. And if we go to our dist folder and we click game official, we will have our gameofficial.exe right here. This will be able to basically be um, our game. All right, T everyone, I have finished this Trojan. Now, an FYI, this Trojan is super simple. Like, I'm talking about script kitty level. But it was really fun to like apply my knowledge with, with the brief overview of Python to this Trojan. So let's display how this Trojan works and what I really did to do this. Let's transition over to the... In front of me, I have two machines. I have the Cali machine, and I have my victim machine. This is a sample Windows 10 victim machine that just has a basic installation of Windows. In order for someone to install my game, I would potentially just share this on Facebook. And I would say, download this game, it's a great game, blah, blah, blah. When I was planning my, my phase, I was hoping that I could like make the Trojan spread out and I wouldn't have to be like a one-on-one -on -one attack session, as you'll see here in a minute but I didn't end up doing that. So it's just basically, it's targeted towards one person at a time. In front of my victim machine, I have it already installed. And basically I have my executable here. This is my executable. This is really, this is how the game works. And this is how you um, are gonna be able to launch the game. And here we have the download. And so basically people will come in here and they'll, da they'll click the download.exe and then it will download the game official.py and you will have this game installed. Now that download.exe down there, that is where the backdoor resides. So basically what happens is um, the download.exe is referenced within the gameofficial.exe. And so when you launch the gameofficial.exe, um, there's Python code that says, hey, open up this um, client or open up this uh, backdoor, and then you can just play whatever you wanna play. So for instance, let me go ahead and show you here what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and pretend like we are the victim, okay? Basically, what we're gonna do here is we're going to run our listener program, which is gonna listen for any incoming connections over port 4444, um, and yeah, that's it. So we're gonna like that, and boom, we have, we're waiting for online connections. The guy is gonna come in and he's gonna be like, I'm gonna download this IT nerd game. He's gonna go into the download.exe. He's gonna click the download.exe. Ooh, it's downloading there. Look at it, there's some downloads. But bam, we have a connection from 10.0.2.7. We have a connection, people. We can now have a backdoor in there, basically. So now that we have that in there, we can go to our gameofficial.exe and we can launch it. And kablam, we have our game. And this is a very quality game. I will be a hacker game. 
and we have our connection here with our you know with our 10 dot with our, our IP address and we can go around and we can just hang out and do whatever we want to do you know find the sweatshirt find the, the PC you know find everything we need to do you know there's there's so many things we got to do here have our, our uh, device connected here and we can do dir let's say we can and we can interact with the uh, the terminal on their end we can upload different files. So for instance, I can upload my keylogger.py file that I created in level two, the level two project, and upload successful. We will have it uploaded on to the machine and we were able to basically do whatever we wanna do with this victim machine. Let's see here. It's gonna be right here. Now there is some severe limitations to this. First off, like I said, you really can't, like you have to be, you have to know when someone is going to click the back door. So like you really have to, it's really basic in terms of like, you know, this isn't something that can be multiplied and, and, and basically automated on its own. It's pretty basic. Uh, number two is that, you know, getting this past an antivirus program could be a potential problem. Uh, when I was trying to basically put this program onto my just my host my home my home computer my antivirus was flagging it up saying that there was a virus there was a back door something like that so bypassing that could be an issue and really it's not geared or made towards uh grand level or big scale uh trojans it's more of just a one-on-one -on -one trojan like i've said wraps up the trojan uh, like i said it's it's pretty pretty basic i mean we're talking script kitty level but it was really fun trying to make this whole game and make this all come together. That is it for the Complete Python Project Level 3, and that is it for the series as a whole. I finally got to finish this project after a long time away. Overall, this project was really a good way to end it with a capstone with something that I had to apply to. That wraps up the Complete Python Project for the Cybersecurity 2019. Uh, it was overall pretty good, and that is it. So if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. And if you could uh, comment down in the sections below what I can be doing better in terms of like how I could have made this program, this Trojan better, let me know because I'm always looking for improvements. That is it. Have a good day, and keep your Trojan running. I right, just let me end the video.